This video is made possible by Francisco Herrera Jr. at the Honda Superstore of Joliet. Francisco is a longtime car enthusiast who is dedicated to finding the perfect vehicle for you. Email him at the address on the screen or contact him with his information found in the description below. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2021 Honda Passport Elite. Up front is a 3.5 liter V6, and down below is a nine speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Honda Passport Elite for two reasons. First of all, I drove the Honda Passport right as it came back out in 2019, and so it's been a couple years, and I'm interested to see what's changed. The second reason is the fact that this is an Elite. And in Honda nomiculture, Elite is the top dog. This is the top most expensive, most luxurious Honda Passport you can buy. And so we'll be getting into that a little bit later on. But let's get back to that 3.5 liter V6. Well, it's found in a bunch of different Honda products. It's nothing too unusual. We saw it in the Odyssey. We saw it in the Pilot. We saw it in the Ridgeline. We saw it in almost everything that Honda has ever built for the last 20 years. It's a very worked through, very solid engine. And I'm putting the horsepower and torque up on the screen for those of you interested. And then I will be putting the miles per gallon up on the screen as well. Not too bad. Now there is no hybrid passport quite yet, although I would not be shocked if Honda decided to do that in the coming years. But like I said, paired to it is a nine speed automatic transmission. And I like it. Again, this is a pretty common Honda transmission. Nothing really too crazy here or interesting. It shifts really quietly. I don't even notice it shifting. Nine gears is a lot, but of course it is for that fuel economy. And honestly, I have no complaints. Now, last but not least, this here Passport is all wheel drive. All of the elites are all wheel drive. However, you can still get a lower trim level that is front wheel drive. But like I said, the elites are all wheel drive. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have some physical gauges mixed with a screen. On the left is my coolant temperature. On the right is my fuel. And then in the center is that screen. And I get a cool tachometer up at the top. Very digital, and I absolutely love that. I think it looks great. And this is sort of Honda's newer styling of gauges. So it looks fresh, it looks modern, and it keeps up with other brands. I have a bunch of different things I can swipe through in that center screen that I'm doing now. Honda gives you a decent amount of information, which I really like, and I can't really ask for too much more. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my skip track, controls for the center screen and the gauges we just talked about, my home button, volume, voice commands, phone options. And then on the right, I have my radar cruise options, lane keep assist, and the heated steering wheel. Again, the heated steering wheel is standard on the elite trim level, so it's one of those nicer features. The steering wheel also has perforated leather on it, which I really like. It feels good in my hands and again, feels very premium, which it should because this is a premium, premium passport. To the left of me, I have my mirror adjustments, my econ button, and my sensors on and off, basically for parking sensors, traction control, lane keep assist, and pre-collision warning. On the door, I have two different memory seat options, my power windows, power locks, and my gas cap and trunk release down below. Moving into the center, I have a very modern Honda infotainment system. This is the newer look that you'll find on like the Ridgeline and Odyssey, but is lacking in the HRV and Civic, at least here in 2021. And I like it. It's very colorful. It's easy to use, easy to see. I do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, which is fantastic. But I also have Bluetooth audio, phone, FM, Sirius XM, social playlist, software. I mean, tons and tons of stuff here in the center screen, which I really, really like. I think it's really, really good. And it does pretty much everything I want it to do. Now, part of me wishes that there was some type of fun little app in here, like the Honda Ridgeline has the bed speaker setting or the Honda Odyssey has the cabin talk setting. The Passport doesn't really get any fun or different or unique apps to the Passport, but that's okay. I understand there's no third row or truck bed 
in order to do so. The backup camera is nice and clear. It also has the beepers like every other Honda product. And I like it. I like that the lines adjust as you turn the steering wheel. That is a big selling point for me. And overall, really, this center infotainment system is just a thorough 10 out of 10. I really, really enjoy it. Down below the center screen, we do have our climate control options. Nothing really blowing me away here, although I do have dual zone climate, which is very nice. I have rear climate settings, which I can lock. And of course, front and rear defrosters, as well as defrosting mirrors. So it does have heated mirrors, which is very nice, especially here in the Midwest. But before we get on with the rest of the video, I want to say thank you to the people who made this video possible. First up, CashForCars.com wants to buy your car. They will buy your car with a clean title, salvage title, running, non-running, whatever it may be. You can get your free quote by clicking the link in the description below. CashForCars.com is the easiest way to sell your car. Within a couple of clicks, they'll come pick up your car in less than 24 hours. You don't even have to leave the couch, and it's absolutely awesome. Next up, we have con plates. The con plate is a suction cup mount for your license plate when you don't want to mount it to the front of your car. If you have to legally have a front license plate, like you do here in Illinois, but you don't want to stick it on the front of your car, you think it's ugly, you want to take it off for car shows, whatever it may be, you can actually just put your license plate into the suction cup holder and put it in your front windshield when driving around to remain legal. You can get your con plate in the description below and every sale helps out the channel so make sure your car looks good with con plates last but not least i want to talk about the fixed obd2 sensor now this is a bluetooth sensor that you plug into your obd2 port on your car and it gives you a ton of cool information like your check engine lights how to fix your check engine lights approximately how much it should cost maintenance intervals like oil change tire rotation brake pads when you should change that stuff out this is absolutely fantastic for anyone into cars or anyone looking to get into mechanics Fixed is offering my viewers a discount through that link, so go check it out and again, help support the channel. But with all of that out of the way, let's get on with the review. A little bit further down, we have a cubby in the center, but I do have heated and ventilated front seats. So heated and cooled seats for the front two occupants. The ventilated seat is a standard feature on the Elite, so that is one of the Elite perks is the ventilated seats. I definitely like these settings. The buttons feel very solid. They light up very bright, very colorful. And I like that a lot. They don't feel cheap. Moving on to the center console, I have a 12 volt outlet as well as a 2.5 amp USB charger, as well as this is how you plug the phone into the center console. And I have a wireless charger. Again, another elite option is the wireless charger in the center console, which is very, very nice. Now the center console itself on the left, this is our shifter. It is the push button shifter. And I'll admit it, when I first reviewed the Passport two years ago, I hated this shifter because it was so new, so different, and I just thought it was stupid. Well, I've actually come to really like this shifter. It's actually a lot more simple than you think. It's easy to use, and I don't really have any qualms about it. At the very bottom, I do have my mode button. So I have normal snow, mud, and sand, which I like when you switch this mode. There's a little image of a passport driving over or through these certain conditions that you are now selecting. I really, really like that attention to detail that Honda put into that screen. They didn't have to, but they did. To the right of that, we do have cup holders. So we'll do a big friggin' bottle test and it fails. Unfortunately, the Passport does fail the big friggin' bottle test. But it failing is okay because down below, I have this giant, giant center console. I mean, enormous, oversized center console. There's no need for it being this large, but it is, and I don't mind. I could fit the big friggin' bottle in there, no problem as well as I could probably fit a rotisserie chicken or a half deflated soccer ball or whatever else you want. You could fit a bunch of things in here. I also do have another 12 volt outlet and a USB in this center console. What I don't like about the center console is that it leaves me without a giant armrest. Now there are armrests on the side of the seats that you can fold down, but they're way too close to the body. You can't really lean onto them on a road trip. So if you really rely on a center console while you're driving long distances, the Passport here does not have that. But speaking of those armrests, they are attached to the seats. Like I said, they are heated, ventilated, power and memory, which are all great features for the Passport. Absolutely adore them. I think they're fantastic. 
and I think they look nice as well. They have this sort of perforated leather look. I wish that Honda would have done some diamond stitching or some quilted leather, something of that sort, make it feel a little bit more premium since this is a $45,000 SUV, but beggars can't be choosers. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so now we're in the back of the 2021 Honda Passport and legroom is pretty good. My knees are not hitting the front seat. This is my driving position, which could obviously be moved up if need be. And headroom is great. I am 5'11", and I'm not hitting the roof, which is fantastic. And I can't say in all SUVs. Down here, I have my own climate controls, heated seats, which is fantastic, two USB chargers, and a little AC outlet. I absolutely love that as well. Great features back here in the Passport. I do have a center console that folds out, just two cup holders, nothing really too interesting there. What I really like about the Passport and what is probably my favorite thing about the Passport is that there is no third row. Now you might be thinking, Zach, why is that a good thing? Well, it means that Honda didn't have to scurry around and try to squeeze a third row into this car. Now, if you need a third row SUV, there is of course the Pilot. And honestly, I would skip the Pilot and just go straight to a Honda Odyssey. I know it's a minivan, but it's just, it's so much better, especially if you're gonna use a third row lot. This doesn't have to squeeze a third row. Think of it this way. If you've ever taken a long flight and you're about to get on the plane and you're like, man, this is gonna be a six, seven, eight hour flight. I flew to Madrid, that was like nine hours. And you're like, I should use the bathroom before I go. You're scurrying around, trying to find the bathroom with the least line or no line at all. And you're trying to get it all done before you board your nine hour flight so you don't have to use the onboard bathroom on the plane. Well, the Honda Passport, there is no scurrying around. There's no trying to find a bathroom. You're good, you're already good. There's no rush at the end. That's how I feel about it not having a third row. They didn't have to squeeze it in because most third rows just feel like an afterthought anyway. This just cuts that whole part out, which I absolutely love. But speaking of that back area, let's hop back there, take a look at the tailgate and some storage in the back. All right, around the back of the 21 Honda Passport, power tailgate right on the fob here, which I absolutely love. Approaching here, look, no third row, great. I do have a 12 volt outlet right here. I have some cargo nets over here, but I have these buttons. Look at that. Whoa, uh -oh. jeez. So with these easy buttons, boom, completely flat. Look at how much room there is here in the Passport. Absolutely love that. You can definitely move cross country with it, go on a long road trip, whatever it might be. You have tons and tons of options back here. Now we do have this little storage. You flip this up and look at the storage you have down here. This is great for things that you don't want to roll around. Maybe you want to put some snacks back here or jumper cables, whatever it may be. And I do have little cups, I guess you want to call them cup hold, whatever this is, just for like little things so they don't roll around, which is fantastic. Nice little pole strap, put it right back here. I absolutely love this. This is tons and tons of room. If you don't have a huge family, this is the perfect size for you. This is going to get your weekend jobs done. This is going to make it easy to move in and out. I mean, just tons and tons of storage space back here. And I love that these buttons fold them down. Now there is no automatic fold back up like you'd find in the Ford Explorer ST, but I still like the fact that you can put them down from all the way back here. Like if you're carrying something big and you're like, ah, oh, it's not gonna fit, boom, touch them and they're down. Now we gotta talk about the looks. I really, really like the look of the Passport. I think it's proportioned well, like I just said in the back seat review. It's a good size, it's not too big, it's not too small, it looks right, and that's all I have to say. And I really do like this color. I like that it's not black or silver or white. It's sort of this midnight blue and I really, really enjoy that. Now let's talk about my thoughts on the Passport as a whole. Well, as you guys know, I like to get the negatives out of the way. What don't I like about the Passport? Well, not much. I guess you could say I wish the seats were a little bit nicer for being $45,000. I wish that it had the diamond leather like you find in the Nissan Rogue. But other than that, I can't really find much wrong with this thing. 
I really like the driving experience, and like I said, and will keep saying, I think that this is a perfect size. I like the look of it. I think it looks modern. I think it looks fresh. I love the features in here, the heated steering wheel, ventilated seats, wireless charger, Apple CarPlay, the sunroof. The sunroof is great. And I think, honestly, this is a very solid, complete package. The only thing I really have an issue with is the price tag of $45,000. I just wish that for that price, there was a little bit more fanfare, a little bit more showmanship. Like I said, with the diamond stitch seats, I wish that there was just sort of that little extra push towards luxury or just some type of party trick or just something just to set it over the edge and set it apart from the other passports. Because yes, this is a passport with more features, but that's it. There's no extra reward for buying the top trim besides just a handful more features. And I wish that there was. And my final talking point I wanted to bring up just real quick is why would you buy one of these over a Honda CRV? Honda CRV, again, made by Honda. Pretty decent sized two row SUV. Looks similar, drives similar. Why would you go with the Passport? Well, Passport comes with a 3.5 liter V6 where the CRVs only come with four cylinder turbos or a hybrid. So if you want a hybrid, you can get a CRV hybrid, but you buy a Passport because you want that extra torque, you want that extra power, and it is just slightly larger than a regular CRV. And that can make all the difference, just a little bit extra room. Me personally, I would probably buy a Passport over a CRV if I didn't care all that much about hybrids. But again, the CRV hybrid is a fantastic car and I'll leave that at the end of this video. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Francisco at the Honda Superstore of Joliet. His information is up on the screen. He's absolutely awesome. I've been working with the Honda Superstore of Joliet for a couple months now and they've been fantastic. Their staff is very kind, very friendly, and I can't say enough good things about them. If you're in the market for a new Honda or a used vehicle, because they do have plenty of used vehicles on the lot as well, please go check them out with the information up on the screen. Shoot Francisco a message, let him know what you're looking for, and he will find the right vehicle for you. He's a fellow car enthusiast. He's been into building and modifying cars for longer than I have even. And so he's really in it for the love of cars and not just to get a paycheck twice a month. So huge thank you to Francisco and the Honda Superstore of Joliet for letting me take out their Honda Passport. But don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.